Hi everyone, welcome to another ORCID video. Today we're going to do a collection update. Um, first section is going to be about ORCIDs that are in spike or in bloom or going to bloom soon. Um, I brought them all inside uh, right here in the window so we can just go through them real quickly. Um, and then I, actually it's kind of late afternoon here, it's really hot right now so I'm just going to wait until like early evening so we can get outside without like bursting into, into flames um so we're gonna do uh, another section outside we're also gonna do a um orchid uh repotting because there's one right now that's actually in here that needs to um, desperately uh, repot it and i don't think i've ever had it repotted since i got it uh although i, I just got it this year but um that's what we'll be doing as well. Um, hopefully we'll get that in camera. Um, but first off, um, I just wanna show you guys my, um, uh, this is the Phalaenopsis hieroglyphica. Um, as you can see, it's pretty big. Uh, it's developing buds right now. So it's looking really good. I hope it doesn't bloom um, while I'm on vacation, which is, um, it's gonna happen Two weeks from now, actually just one week from now, um, th that would be uh, pretty, pretty terrible. Um, we're also going to talk about some stuff that I will be doing to prepare for um, time away from these guys. But it's looking pretty good. I, uh, already I can tell um, at least eight or seven buds that has really developed. Um, but I'm very excited to see this one. There will definitely be more than last year when I got it. I think last year was only three buds. Um, it had four, but then one blasted because I think I just got it into my um, apartment and the conditions were quite drastic from the greenhouse, so it blasted one of them. But yeah, I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to a very good show this year. Yeah, that's my hieroglyphica, the first one. All right, so now I'm just gonna take um, my camera with me and show you guys the rest, um, because obviously I can't bring the webcam with me. All right. Uh, first is my Psychopsis Mendenhall Hildos. This is the third bud that it has developed since uh, the time lapse video. The second bud that I developed had uh, developed about this size, but then blasted because I think it's because the heat outside it was getting above 90 degrees. Um, so I brought it in here, hopefully that it doesn't blast anymore. But it's looking good so far. And down here we have the Millennium Magic Witchcraft. It's starting to lose its leaves. It's not the biggest bulb that has ever developed, but uh, it, it did spike, um, but unfortunately there was a slug that um, kind of topped off the uh, the tip there. I think it counted about 12 bud that it was developing, and you can see here that um, it had chewed up the first bud as well. So that's quite unfortunate. Um, it was one of the biggest luck I ever saw because I, I caught it in action the next day. So um, I took care of that problem. But yeah, it's a little sad that I only, I only have three or maybe two left now. But um, I'm keeping it in here just in case something else happens or just to prevent something else from happening. And down here underneath the Millennium Magic Witchcraft is my Phalaenopsis Lucky Star. And this thing is um, pretty crazy, like, I cut off the sp uh, fire spike uh, that bloomed in the spring up till summer, and like three days later, another one came out. So I don't think this, this orchid has ever had a resting period as far as blooming is concerned. It just continuously bloom, which is really, really nice. So it's definitely a keeper, for sure. And next to that is this No ID Phalaenopsis, it's a purple one. Uh, I developed this flower spike that's now really, really long. Um, in 
early spring. And it has this um, wacky little bloom. Hold on, let me turn it around. Yeah, it's quite misshapen. And um, it lasted these two buds, but it keeps elongating. Um, this is the only second successfully bloomed bud that it has in the flower spike. The other one just, um, it develops buds and then just keep lasting. Probably because I keep forgetting to water it. Like it'll go like weeks without any water and the roots in the pot there just like completely shriveled up. So I'm not the best caretaker for this one. I keep forgetting this one for some reason, even though it's a Zen Spike. But yeah, um, hopefully I can keep these buds alive and in bloom. But uh, it's developing a root right there. All right, moving on. Um, these are some. Uh, blooms that I cut off from, uh, or leftover blooms that I just cut off because I had to do a repot of the orchid that it came from. It's pretty. But um, this is one of the no, or actually this one has the ID from my no ID ID'ing orchid video. Um, it looks like it's done now. And this is the one that I was I'm telling you about that needs a repot because you see all this roots developing and um, the broken down media. Yeah, this one's going to be in a repotting video. And over here is my TTPS. I should probably repot this too, but it's in, in bloom at the moment. There. And I always. There's never more than two blooms that's open at any given time. As soon as the second one opens, the one right behind it just kind of fades. But it, the spike keeps elongating too, uh, which it's good, I guess. Um, there's all kinds of root growth down there too. And it's still in the reg original pot, but it's doing fine, I guess. I, I'm waiting for the flower spike to be done so I can um, repot it, but uh, it looks like it hasn't happened. It just keeps growing longer and longer, which I'm not complaining about. That's the um, Phalaenopsis Michaelitsii in water culture, which I need to change out the water. And next to that is my, that other orchid that's in, uh, I had no idea that I was identified. Um, it's it's at a stage now that I, I really like the colors. I, um, I don't know what color that it's called, but I really like it. And um, still produce that disgusting fragrance. Look at that happy sap right there on the edge of the oh, of the uh, sepal. This one is developing roots as well. Um, but it's not due for a repot because I think this, this uh, media is only a year old or a little bit over a year. So it doesn't look like it's um, broken down yet. So we keep it in there. And over here is my uh, Rangus Distincta. I don't know if I had this one on video but this was a repurchase and it's in Spike and it's just slowly developing but there's two of them. Pot it up. I'm thinking about mounting this one as soon as this if one finishes blooming, but I'm very excited about that. I think the um, the spur or nectar is there is going to be super long, which is really really cool. Uh, down here is my um, sad looking uh, what is that one? Cochlearis, Phalaenopsis cochlearis. It wasn't really doing anything for a while in this pot, so I just had it unmounted, or unpotted, and then put it in water culture. It looks like the leaves are growing again. So that's good, but it's it's taking a sweet time. Um, over here, I'm gonna talk about this one first. This one is the 
I forgot what, what the cross was, but it's a, one of the parents is a Trataspis. And um, it's a sequential bloomer. And this one, it looks like the spike may be developing a bit further. I'm not really sure. But it looks like it's developing another flower spike near the base. Right there, which is really cool. The leaves on this thing are very, very skinny. Uh, down here is my Phalaenopsis violacea. No, sorry. Yeah, it is a violacea variety of Borneo, aka Belina. And it's developing its bud. Nothing else to report on that. Here is my Tetraspis C1. Um, the, the second spike that it developed, um, it's about the same size as the previous one, which never bloomed. So I'm hoping this one can uh, get longer than that one and we'll start to produce some buds. Yep. And here's just another no ID Phalaenopsis. I like this one because it's, it's staying compact with the leaves being very rounded. It's in water culture and it's developing all kinds of roots uh, with a new leaf coming. So that's really exciting. Okay, that's uh, I think that's all the orchids that are inside right now. So we'll stop um, and um, get back with the other orchids that are outside. Okay, so while we're waiting for the temperature outside to drop a little bit, um, we're going to go ahead and do the repotting. And this is my um, Catalia Gotada cross with um, bicolor alba. And this is the first repotting that I will do for this one. Um, I'm gonna take this out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the flower spike that it's um, slowly fading already. There you go. It's gone. It's still pretty, very pretty though. And I'll, I'm also going to remove some of the stakes in here. Lay this down. Okay, so now the stakes are removed. Um, let me, I guess I can talk about some of the stuff that we'll be using. This is my potting mix. It's just straight up bark chips. Uh, this is Orchiata bark. Um, the grade is super, which is about three, um, three quarter to an inch big. Um, that's all I'm really using. And then we're gonna repot this into, it's just slightly, it's about the same size as the pot that the orchid is um, currently in but it is slightly taller. Um, I'm using this one because it sort of, it's, because it's slimmer, you can go into the pot without having to suffocate the uh, bottom part. So that's what we'll be using. So now the top part is gonna remove all the old media, which is the part that I hate the most. And um, I'm trying not to damage these um, new root tips that are developing right now. I know that Calia um, roots are a little bit more expendable than say um, Monoponio orchids like Phalaenopsis, but I still hate to do it. So I'm gonna try my best not to do um, any damage to them. All right, let's just get started. Um, I'm just gonna try to hold all these pseudobulbs and just uh, try to yank them out. Um, but I think it's kind of first. Squeeze the pot to loosen up the roots. Okay, there we are. Yeah, the uh, bark in here, it's really broken down. It's very soft. Most of the roots here are actually kind of dead. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and remove all that. And when we come back, um, we'll have a very good cleaned orchid to repot. Alright, 
So now that I've re finished removing all the um, broken down media, I'm gonna cut off all the dead roots by um, feeling all the roots, see if they're squishy and papery. Um, I'll cut those off. Here's the tag that was um, bound to one of the roots that I could never get out. But uh, yeah, here it is. The full name is um, Calia Cutata Variety Grindiflora by Calia by Color Alba. There's also some dried up pseudobulbs, uh, back bulbs, that um, I'm just going to cut them off just to keep things tidy. Okay, so there we are. Um, it doesn't look like we have a lot of viable roots left, but um, I managed to not um, break off of any of the new root tips that are developing. So let me go and get this um, tray cleaned up and we'll pot up in the pot. Okay, so now that the tray is cleaned up, we're going to pot up the plant. Um, but before I do, I'm going to put a bit of um, stones on the bottom to help um, with the drainage and also keep the pot from falling over even though I'm going to put in the um, decorative pot later on. But sometimes I like to leave it without the decorative pot just to make sure that, um, especially after watering, to make sure that everything drains and not like pool up in the, uh, the decorative pot. So that's what I'll do. Okay, so here it is. It's not a lot, but um, it, it, it is about an inch of um, gravel. But um, I'm just gonna fill it up with a little bit of um, the Orchiata bark. Just checking to see if it's leveled. All right, so I've positioned the orchid so that the growing um, direction is um, has a little bit more space. So now, I'm just going to pour in some bark. Alright, so it's mostly packed in there. Um, but I am going to use this, um, this, it's a paper folding bone thing that I use for uh, um, origami and arts and craft. Um, I'm just going to try to get all the bark chips filled in all the little tiny air pockets that's in there just to ensure that the uh, the orchid doesn't tip over and fall out of the pot. So the last step is going to be staking this orchid up because it's kind of growing all over the place. I just want everything to be super compact. Um, I'm just going to use some of the uh, stakes that uh, were previously used. And I'm going to use these um, rope ties things that are really cool. I don't know what they're called, but I think she could probably get some more.
And then the last thing I do is just put this tag. Um, let me go clean this up first and then I'll put it in. Okay, the, the tag is clean. I'm just gonna put it in. And that will do it. Um, I'm gonna give this a little drink just to wash out some of the um, the dust from the uh, from the work. But uh, that's pretty much it. All right, here's a quick look at the final product. And that was a very quick and dirty repotting, which is a process that I absolutely hate. Um, yeah, it's the one thing that I don't like about growing orchids. But I'm glad it's done. And I only have to do this maybe once or twice a year. Or actually one, uh, once a year or once every two years. Especially if I um, don't have this uh, constantly wet. It should probably last for a good bit. I should probably mention this in the update too as well, but um, this is my, oh, I don't know what is, um, here's the tag for it. These are my or, um, water culture orchids. And I need to clean out um, the water and the contents in there because uh, there's quite a bit of algae that's um, growing and also all kinds of sediments that needs to be cleaned out. And I probably should probably reposition that so then the roots actually stay in the water, not like hanging out in the air because I think it's kind of stopped growing now because it's kind of growing in the air. Uh, this is my patio pedalum that I like absolutely hate. Um, but ever since I had it in water culture, it's starting to fan out rather than growing upwards. It's looking really good right now. And I also have, um, if I can zoom in there, there are three um, developing roots right there rather than like up here or somewhere, you know. So it's looking like it's acting normally now. Um, the roots underneath seems like they're doing okay as well, but I, I, I need to clean this out today. I've been um, neglecting to do that for a while now. It's it's developing a new um, leaf. I just need to clean that as well. But yeah, um, it, if it blooms, it you know it might lose that title of the least favorite orchid in my collection. Okay, now that it's gotten a little bit more bearable outside, we're going to continue on with the updates. And um, I thought about it, there's not nothing much to talk about outside except for maybe new orchids. So I think that's what I'll, I'll do. Uh, oh, except for this one. This is my um, Arangus um, Cardinal Gem. It's uh, spiking at the moment. If you can see right there. Say. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit further. Yeah, right there. It's a new flower spike. With a bunch of root tips. Active root tips. And um, moving on. I don't know if I've mentioned this one. This is a, uh, a Phalaenopsis species. It's a Phalaenopsis hyenensis. It's one of those um, semi-deciduous as well. It's very pretty flowers. Small but pretty. Uh, this is my uh, Wilsonii. It's not new, but um, the leaf that I had it dropped off, so it's traveling another one. Oh, that's good. Oh, this is definitely a new one. This is the uh, Phalaenopsis ladenii. It's looking really nice with this beautiful model leaves. And here we have my, well, it used to be my um, Orangus um, Cornuwania. It looks like it's um, died due to stem rot, stem rot maybe. So yeah, so that's kind of unfortunate because it was developing a spike as well. So that wasn't cool. Um, I'll just get another one because this one was really um, inexpensive. 
and it's um, grown from seed from Louisiana Orchid Connection. Um, oh, here's another new one. This is another species of Phalaenopsis with a beautiful model leaves as well. This is Phalaenopsis syllabensis. Yeah, just so, just growing. And these three are three new orchids from Aquatinera that I've ordered in sometime in August, but it's just recently um, delivered. And um, I recently repotted as well, and let me just show you guys what I got. The first one here that's in the orchid basket is a Path Pathinia cristata. I think I saw this one um, at the Atlanta um, Botanical Gardens. They're um, in their orchid house, and I wanted to get it, but I couldn't really find a place in the U.S. that had it. So this is this is what I could find. Um, when I got it, I was a little disappointed because it was very very small, and uh, it didn't look really good. All the leaves were quite um, wilted and dried. So um, I promptly repotted it into just um, pure sphagnum moss and kept it pretty moist all the time. I got it sometime earlier this week, I think, and it's, it's looking a little bit better. The leaves are all perked up now. I don't know what's really going on down there, but um, I'm keeping this one um, underneath these um, uh, plant stand because um, I don't think it's supposed to grow in very strong light. It's supposed to grow in very low light. Uh, there's actually two divisions in here, two separate divisions, but I just kept them together. But um, I'm hoping that will... I mean, it looks like it's doing a little bit better. At least these are not um, wilted anymore, and I cut off some of the brown spots, the, the pots that died. So it's looking, looking okay. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it bloom, because the blooms are just fantastic. But given the size that it is, it's probably not going to be for quite a while. Alright, so next one. This one, um, I'm so glad to find it because um, I, I saw this this one. Um, this is the... I'm not even trying to say the name of it, but it's there. I saw this one initially on eBay and the blooms are just amazing. It's um, The coloration is so dark, deep purple. And um, I went into a bidding war up up to like a hundred something, but I eventually lost because I, I just felt like it was just too much for one plant, um, which I'm kind of glad because eventually I found one. Uh, somebody tipped me off that uh, Equigenera had one for only fifteen dollars, so I'm so glad I didn't pay a hundred something for a single plant that could be um, purchased for only fifteen. But it's it had this pseudobulb. It had two um, new growths, but this one looks like it's probably gonna, not going to develop anything. It looks like it's pretty damaged. But the one that's on this side, it looks a little bit more promising. So um, it's looking good. I was surprised to see. I was expecting pretty bad quality plants or um, in terrible shape, but I'm surprised that this one, that none of the pseudobulbs are wrinkly or dehydrate or anything like that. I mean, the roots are kind of shot, but, you know, that's um, understandable considering how how it got here. Uh, but the next one is a Uncidium Alliance uh, hybrid. And the name is there. It makes these white blooms, or at least one picture, white blooms, but the edges are like pink or purplish. And it's very delicate and nice and yeah and this one is really surprising because it's, it's quite big and I've lost none of the leaves and all of the pseudobulbs some of them are kind of wrinkly and stuff but that's again that's kind of understandable but the new growths are looking great as well so overall I think I'm pretty happy with Equigenera um, the only complaint I would have I guess would be just the turnaround time for when you order it to the time of the shipment but that's just due to the um, uh, the relative closeness to the shows that um, that they can travel to so if that makes any sense <laughs> 
but um, yeah, um, I, as far as reordering from again, I definitely cons would consider that, and I'll probably put in another order as soon as I finish um, coming back from the holidays. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I was expecting the worst. That's why I didn't go overboard with the um, order. And just I just want to start out with these three, just just to see how they are. But yeah, they're they're pretty awesome, and the prices are so great. So the next orchid haul that I'll probably do might be a little bit bigger than this because I want to get all of their paphinias. It's been so so great. Here's another Arangus that I got from, recently from Louisiana Orchid Connection. As you can see, it's mounted. It's in spike, but it looks like the spike is dying. Um, when I got it, the tip uh, was kind of black, so I, I figured it probably got damaged through shipment. So um, now it's just kind of browning up, so I don't think I will see any blooms in there, but this is the um, Arangus biloba, I think. It looks a lot like my um, Arangus distincta with the bifurcation at the leaves there. But it's a, it's a pretty big plant and um, I don't know if I can show you, but now the roots are kind of developing. At the at, at where the uh, spike is coming from, and the cool thing it's like it's kind of orange. Uh, I don't think it's gonna show you well. Um, the mount here it looks like it's it's uh, kind of broke breaking down a little bit, so that has me a little concerned. Um, I'm gonna have to remount this, which is gonna be a monumental task because the roots are pretty bound to it. But I guess if it's broken down, it should be easy to come off. But I'm thinking that I'll have to remount this in the near future. Alright, so um, I had placed um, some orchids uh, from Harzerman recently, and this one is the Phalaenopsis duartiana. It's, it's um, a replacement of the one that I have lost recently. Um, it's even smaller than the one that I got. This is my BLC Marquette Canary Yellowbird that I recently got from Hauserman and uh, have proceeded to repot it because the media that it was it was so broken down like it actually had mushroom growing in it when i repotted it the whole pot uh, media was just covered in mycelium it was a little gross um, and the, the bark chip was like just just like a sponge it was so terrible i don't think i ever had an orchid um, media that's that's um, broken down that much but I'm glad it's it's repotted it's looking good um, it's working on a new growth right now this one's supposed to produce like really yellow flowers this is like just one solid color which I don't think I have anything in my collection that's just straight up yellow which is not my favorite color but um, I think it adds quite a bit of variety to my collection, so I got it. Uh, I don't like how all the leaves are kind of like grown all over the place, but um, in the future I'll try to train it so then everything grows upward. This is a Calia Dalviana variety aria. Um, the cultivar is Poella, crossed with self, and um, this one was purchased because I kind of felt bad, bad for it. I saw this one um, at my orchid nursery around here. I've been eyeing it for like a year now and I've always hesitated to buy it because um, I've heard that it's very difficult to grow for some reason and it didn't seem like anyone cared for it um, at the orchid uh, nursery and it just kept they kept moving it round and round at like different sites maybe just to um, get someone to buy it but nobody did and I felt bad for it so I got it. But it looks like it's doing really, really good. Ever since I repotted it, the roots are growing like mad. That wasn't there two weeks ago, like this whole thing. So it's growing really, really fast. This one makes very pretty yellow flowers with the, I think it was a like pink or purple lip. That's like ruffled. So it, it's doing really good for me. It's looking a little bit yellow. I think it's like nutrition nutritional deficiency or something 
with the growth, new growth are here. I'm just like turning it back and forth each day to make sure that it grow up straight. Because uh, sitting on the stand here, where it lives, it's um, it's just getting sun um, from the one side. But yeah, that's a that's another new one. This is another Phalaenopsis gigantea that I got in place of the one that I lost. I know I got one already that I got because I lost um, my first one, but that one is really small. So I I got one that's very near to blooming size. This is the Phalaenopsis gigantea, also from Louisiana Orchid Connection. I think it might be from the same batch that I originally got it, but this one, because they had it kept longer, maybe they got a little bit bigger. Um, it's doing well since I repotted it. The roots are all growing, as you can see there. So I'm hoping this one will stay with me for a long time. I forgot to mention about this one. This is my recently mounted Orangus Ludio Alba. And um, I decided to remount it because I think it just looks a little bit better this way. This just means that I have to commit to a little bit more a rigorous watering schedule, but I mean I'm already doing for the rest of them, so why you know one more is not gonna kill me. So um, that's what I did recently, and um, this is my LC Sheila Lodebach Equilab, and as you can see, it has a flower sheath, but when I look down in the bottom there. The pseudobulb that it, that it has uh, started to put out two new growths. So um, that doesn't look very good. That means potentially it's going to divert all the energy to those new growth and not flowering. So we'll have to wait and see, but you know, what can you do? Oh, behind there, that's my um, CG roving sentinel that I recently divided. It's the back bulb and uh, it looks like it started a new um, lead in the back there so I decided just to um, I, well I decided to repot it but then I was like it's kind of a little big right now and since it has a new lead I might as well just divide it so that's what I did so this one is a little little pot of and its own this is the main division of my CG rolling sentinel it's working on new growth at the moment this is my um, no ID um, on the city of Alliance. I think it's a Matasia estralita, but I'm not 100% sure because it didn't come with a tag. But it just has this one single bloom that may or may not be going out, um, which is kind of sad. Although I don't think it's blooming at the right time because the last year it was in bloom um, pretty late uh, when I first got it. But yeah, it's a one single bloom that it has. This is my Cygnoti Bartheorum, how do you say that? Pink Dove. Um, it was in Spike, right there. But there was a giant slug that took the entire Spike away. That was really, really depressing. But actually, I wasn't expecting it to bloom this year. I didn't think it was blooming size, but it, apparently it was. So it's not too terribly disappointing, um, but yeah, I, I lost a spike to slug. I think I need to um, throw out some slug pellets later after this video. It looks like it's starting to go into dormancy or something. But it was the biggest slug I've ever seen. Very satisfying to, get, to um, kill it. Because I saw it one night when I was stepping outside just to make sure, check on things. Uh, yeah, very sad. Okay, so after next week, I'm going to be leaving um, for vacation for about 10 days. Um, so I'm trying to figure out a way for me to um, deal with all the orchids that needs daily watering, such as my um, mounted orchids, and also uh, my stewed stanhopias, and my newly acquired pathfinia. So for my mounted orchid, the smaller ones, um, I think I'm just gonna like leave them in these decorative pots and just like have a little reserve of water underneath there so that some roots will get in um, contact with water. So I guess kind of like water culture. 
and I hope that that will last for at least a few days and then you know the, um, then it will dry for a few days um, so I hope that would work for these and for my larger ones and or my um, two Stenhopias and Pathenia um, I think I'm just gonna leave them in my green tub and uh, leave them with a little bit of water reserve maybe like an inch or an inch and a half of water in there and then um, hopefully they'll uh, that will last them uh, for the duration of my holidays um, so that's how I'm, that's how I'm gonna deal with them um, everything else um, they won't I think they'll be okay especially if it's gonna rain during that period of time and since it's October um, the likelihood of it raining here is very likely um, we're talking about torrential rain and that sort of thing um, yeah so this is how I'm, I'm gonna try it and see if it works and I'll give you guys an update if um, if indeed it works uh, so hopefully nothing dies and uh, I'll come back with um, some uh, orchids that are staying alive I'm not gonna do it now because I'll, I'll be here for another week before I leave but uh, yeah Alright, um, I think that's it for this update. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.